How's it going guys? Jacob here again and we're in the Cutting Edge Garage taking a look at a 2011 Isuzu NQR. Uh, the trouble code we're going to be taking a look at today is a P2002 and that is a DPF filter low efficiency code. In layman's terms, basically that means that the differential pressure sensor is not seeing the, uh, the pressure differential that it wants to see with this uh, calculated exhaust flow across the DPF filter. So let's dive in with our scan tool. We got a really uh, easy to follow diagnostic procedure step by step we use that we got from Motor Fleet Cross. So let's uh, take a look a little deeper and figure out what's going on with this truck. Okay, so we have our Texas scan tool hooked up and our ignition on. Let's go into our truck software. I do want to verify the codes we were seeing. We can actually just go to our vehicle history here. I'm going to do a full global scan. I want to see all the codes and all the modules we can talk to. Keys on. Alright, we can press our button here in the bottom right and that will expand and show us all the codes and all the modules. We'd have one of the automatic transmission, a CAN bus counter overrun, but that's not causing any drivability issues right now. What I want to take a look at is this P2002. So what we can do, we can just double tap on that module. It'll take us right into it, and then we can get a better look at what's going on. We can see all our settings, activations, and data stream. All right, here's our fault code. It'll always go straight to the faults page, because that's generally what you want to see first. When you double tap on it, we get a P2002. And what we can do with that code, is we can go to Motor Fleet Cross. We can punch that code in in the performance section under Diagnosis and Testing. And we can get this really nice step-by-step -step diagnostic procedure. So we're going to go through this step-by-step -step and see if we can find out what's causing our issue. Okay, so our first troubleshooting step that we pulled out of motor was to take a look at the DPF pressure sensor. And I think more importantly, the DPF pressure sensor lines. That's a pretty common issue. I've seen a lot of guys replace these, uh, these pressure sensors. And the problem ended up being just an obstruction in these lines. So we've got our pressure sensor itself right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two rubber lines loose, and I'm just going to blow through them to make sure they, they flow nice and free. And if, uh, if they're nice and free, then we'll move on from there and go, out to, go to our next step in our troubleshooting procedure. All right, so for these lines, we just got a couple of these basic squeeze clamps. We'll squeeze them, slide them all down. We got one on this side. Luckily, the last technician who worked on this put them in a place where you can get to them, which is nice. All right, sometimes these lines can be a little tricky to get off. So you can just take a regular pair of pliers, give it a twist, to break it loose. Like when you're working on these plastic nipples, be sure not to squeeze too hard or you crush the nipple and then you're buying a DPF pressure sensor. So now we're just going to twist the hose and pull. All right, we got our line off. Um, we could go get an air hose and blow through it, but I'm just going to blow through it with my mouth just to make sure we got good flow. Feels good to me. Right, so we can get our second hose off here. Ugh. That one feels clear too. So I think my next step is going to be, I'm just going to take these two bolts loose so I can uh, take a closer look at the pressure sensor itself, make sure it's not clogged in these inlets here, and then we'll go from there. The next thing I'd like to do is get our DPF differential pressure sensor off, and I want to make sure there's no obstructions in the ends where the uh, our rubber hoses go on that go to the, uh, the DPF filter itself. First thing I want to do though, take this electrical connector loose and I want to look in the end of it, make sure there's no dirt debris and make sure the, uh, the pins aren't spread out to where it's not making a good connection. And those actually look pretty good. They're clean. Now I'm going to take, it's like the easiest way is take these two bolts loose and our filter should come off. All right, so we got our DPF differential pressure sensor off. And basically, this is going to have a transducer on each side. And what it does, this is going to measure the pressure at the front of the filter and the rear of the filter. And that's where you get the term differential pressure. You'll usually see this as a delta reading in your, in your data stream. And basically, the higher that differential pressure delta is, the more clogged your filter is. And that's how your ECM is going to determine or estimate how much soot is in the filter and when the, it needs to go into active regen or make it go into D-rate because your soot load's too high. But while I got this off, I want to take a look at our electrical connector. Those, those look really clean, actually. I don't see a thing wrong with that. 
And uh, you, you can't blow through this like you could do the lines. There's just there's a separate transducer on each side. So all you can do really is make sure there's no dirt or anything plugging the hole. And those look really good to me. I don't see anything. Uh, so let's move on to the next thing in our diagnostic list. We could have a bad sensor, but let's check, let's check a few more easy things before we go and uh, condemn the sensor. All right, so I'm just going to put our differential pressure sensor back on just so I don't get any bolts mixed up, mixed up or lose anything. It doesn't take but a second. It can save you a headache down the road. All right, guys, the next thing in our diagnostic procedure is I want to take a look and see if I can find any exhaust leaks. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, one of the, the easiest ways is to just crank it up and see if you can feel any air escaping uh, around the gaskets or any of the joints. Or if you have access to a smoke machine, um, you can put the smoke machine in the tailpipe and cut it on, and then you can use a, a good bright flashlight and see if you can see smoke escaping anywhere in the exhaust system. But uh, I don't have access to a smoke machine today, so what we're going to do, we're just going to fire it up. And I'm going to see if I can feel any sort of uh, air escaping, uh, especially around where the uh, the sensors are, or not the sensors, but the uh, the pressure lines that go up to our differential pressure sensor. And uh, I'll see if I can feel anything, and then we'll go from there. Fire it up. All right, so I didn't uh, hear any leaks or feel any leaks when I checked all the joints up under here. Um, so I guess the next step is going to be to pull this filter off, and we're going to see if it's uh, been melted or missing any pieces or if it's starting to break apart. So I got some bolts. Looks like it's just a flange on each side, so it's got some bolts on, and nuts on each side to take loose, and hopefully this filter will just drop straight out, which would be nice. Okay, we're going to take an up-close look at the exhaust side of this canister. You can always tell more about the condition of a DPF filter by the exhaust side. The, the inlet side is usually just going to be pitch black anyway. But if we uh, take a look closer here, you should really, um, if a canister is doing its job correctly, you shouldn't have any soot build up on the exhaust side. exhaust side. It should be almost pure white. But we can tell just by glancing at it that we got some soot build up on the exhaust side, so we probably got something going on. And if we take a good bright light, and kind of shine it at an angle, I can see a big vertical crack and it goes all the way across uh, the face of this material. And also, if you look here, we got some pitting, actually a lot of pitting right here. And that just, the material is actually breaking off and coming loose. And this, this whole filter is probably going to have to be replaced. Um, see another crack here, another crack here. So we got several big cracks going across the whole face of the filter. Now, there's really no way around it. Uh, this whole filter assembly is going to have to be replaced. Uh, no amount of, of regens or cleaning is going to fix this filter. Um, we just got to replace the whole assembly. So let's call the parts house, get us a new filter, and get the truck back on the road. Okay, guys, we're back here, and we have our new DPF filter. Uh, it's been about a week. These things are on national back order, so it took us a while to get one. But if y'all want to take a look, and this is the exhaust side of the filter. We don't have any cracks or any pitting anywhere along the exhaust side. And this is what a DPF filter should look like on the exhaust side. So let's crawl back under the truck, get it installed, and let's get this truck back on the road. Okay, we have our new DPF filter on. Uh, it is worth noting that this would have been way easier if we had a lift, but ours is down, so we had to crawl on the floor and just get it done. Okay, now that our new filter is installed, our next step in the procedure is to turn the ignition on for 30 seconds without cranking the engine. That's going to reset the DPF differential pressure sensor back to zero. Then after that, we have to use our Texas scan tool, go in, do a DPF data reset, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, so we'll turn our ignition on. We'll wait for 30 seconds. Okay, our DPF differential pressure should be reset by now. So let's go into our truck software, go to diagnosis history, and I want to get into the engine control module. All right, our ignition is on. I'm going to go ahead and clear these codes. All right, they turn green, meaning they are cleared. And we'll hop over to settings. Clear DPF data. Our engine is not running. Let's 
turn. This command has been executed. We can exit out of that. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, this truck is repaired and ready to go back down the road. Uh, everything we fixed today was fixed with SP tools and Texas diagnostic software. But the real winner here today, what really helped us fix this truck, is the repair information supplied by Motor. It gave me an easy to follow step by step troubleshooting procedure, and it made uh, fixing this truck an absolute cakewalk. It was easy stuff, guys. So please look at our Motor repair information. Um, if you're not using any kind of repair information, you're doing yourself a real disservice. Please get some repair information that's going to do a lot to help you guys repair trucks. Um, any more information you guys want, you can head to our websites, uh, sptoolsusa.com and ceasusa.com. Uh, everything you've seen here today will be listed on those websites if you want uh, more information. I'll see you guys next time.